right. Yeah, nice. Guys, welcome back. Episode 95. We're getting, we're inching ever so closer towards the magical three figures. Um, and tonight we actually have uh, absolutely amazing guests. Um, and for those that are just starting to chime in now, of course, you are chiming into the happy hour, Wine for the People show. But we're here for your entertainment. I want to know, what are you? Thank you so much, Noah. Did you see that? Thank you. Yeah, His no, hand just levitated. <laughs> I don't know. It was incredible. Perfect pour as well, yeah? Yeah, he's, he's done it before. It's not his first he's, rodeo, Yeah, right? it's not his... I mean, it's not even his 95th rodeo. It's more than that. He's oh. done... He's done... He's got a... a seasoned a campaigner. Seasoned campaigner. Um, but guys, I want to know. Firstly, it is Monday. Bit of a poll out to you guys first. What are you guys drinking at home? And are you drinking on a Monday? Or are you going down the sort of the old healthy route and, and trying to stay off and trying to be productive? And I also want to know to anyone that's chiming in from Victoria... If you're from Victoria or staying, living in Victoria right now, please let us know. Um, I, I would, I would, I've got some questions for you. I want to know how it is over there because mm. we're just stuck in, um, in, in no case South Australia. Um, uh, but anyway, Justin Hess, straight on the comments. Hi, good to see you back again, Justin. Um, and jumping in so freaking quick. But enough of that. We'll get back to the comments in a second. I would like to introduce to you guys uh, another uh, absolutely amazing sommelier uh, from Adelaide. And that, that is a rarity to actually say because in terms of certified sommeliers and people that are actually at, at you know, some of the heights of their craft, um, they're actually few and far in between. Uh, and what we have in Adelaide though is, is absolutely in, incredible uh, in this particular individual. I'm talking about Dan McAvoy. Thanks Thank so much, much. For, for joining us, Dan. Good evening. Um, I have to like straight off the bat, Straight off the bat, certified SOM. Yes, indeed. What does that mean? So there's four levels for those that have watched the movie SOM, I guess. There may be some nerds out there that have, <laughs> so, have so watched Everyone that's watched the world's most nerdy SOM film. Yep, let's do yeah, it. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's jump right into it. <laughs> yeah. um, no, so there's four levels that um, a body, uh, a, like not a governing body, but a body per se that um, made up these accreditations um, kind of, you know, so it's the court, court of course, court, court of, of master, master sommeliers. sommeliers. So they're the That's ones. That's right. Four levels of accreditation. First one being introductory, second being certified, third being advanced, and fourth being master sommelier. Yeah. So master sommeliers, there's I think there's seven or eight in Australia currently. They'd be well, out of out of out of all the people that work in the wine trade, there's absolutely. seven or eight people that are MSs. In Australia, there's probably two hundred and I think it's about two hundred and seventy max in the world. So. If you, wow. at, if you look at how many people are actually... So it's tough. It's tough. It, there's a 2% pass rate or something like that for the Master Sommelier, Master Sommelier exam, Diploma exam. So um, I've got the first two levels. I've, 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 I've become certified. I think there's... Apologies to those who I missed, but I think there's about 10 to 15 in South Australia. Cool. Max. That's awesome. Yeah, no, and and it's I, I found it very rewarding just from my tasting palate yeah. and as well as, you know, being able to get around and know people in the wine industry as well because... Adelaide is a lot about who you know and what, no, not what you do in some cases, but <laughs> yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> no, it is. It's a, it's a very close knit. It's oh, a very, it is. Very I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's amazingly close knit, and and it's one of those things that um, you know, we, I was I was I was stoked actually to see on, on your profile that you were certified because quite often uh, people that hit that that sort of level, typically we lose them to the east eastern coast, eastern states. Sadly, yes. But you're working at, at uh, an utterly amazing place, 2KW, which is like for those that ever get, those are in Adelaide, you should visit if you haven't. Uh, those that are looking to come to Adelaide, you should totally visit 2KW. And for, for any sort of like just visuals for those that are like just trying to anticipate their holiday in South Australia when all of these things uh, are, are beyond us, um, you can look in the link in the description. Um, but tell us about how you ended up uh, at 2K Doves. Okay, so I ended up, so I'm gonna take one right back to start a hospitality career if that's okay, because it's a really mm. blanky wine story that I think- oh, We love got, a good Genesis story. Yeah, it's Let's a do Genesis this. story. It's we love a good Genesis story. So um, essentially I was flaming out of university yep. incredibly well. I was failing everything. I was doing civil engineering, just wasn't up to it. Couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, right, okay. Didn't really enjoy it. Wow. So 2010, I had a glass of, I, my auntie and I went to- Oh, you had a Genesis wine. We've got a, we have, oh, we've got a wow. wine with us. That's so cool. For those at home, I want to know, what, have you had a Genesis wine? That the wine that great, got you into a great all question, of it. Actually. Um, so 20th birthday, um, so that's 10 years ago this year. Um, oh, we, you're 90, 90, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, dope. Love it. Um, so, um, had a 2007 Domaine Pinot Noir from the Corriba Valley. Yeah, so that, okay. So that's that's 
I, I just it just blew my mind at that stage being a twenty year old drinking wine out of a goon sack most most nights. So um, yeah, represent. Um, and then drinking this wine it just blew me away. Like I'd worked in hospitality, I'd, I've done all this stuff before, but I'd never taken it that seriously. And then it just changed where, my whole trajectory of, of my mm. career and everything like that. Mm. Went into hospitality, moved into the state. We'll get to that later, I dare say. But um, came back from Victoria, um, just looking for another opportunity in Adelaide, just thinking yeah. that I could come back and you know give back to the industry that really nurtured me when I started started up in hospitality in Adelaide. Yeah. Um, and um, got picked up by Two KW, and haven't really looked back since. It's it's been a, it's been a interesting ride, but it, it's, it's a ride that I wouldn't have changed for the world because I, I really really love working there. So, what do you love most about being a song? That, that particular job, what do you love most about it? I love the fact that it really does combine combine the theoretical and the practical element of the world of wine. And it must be really thrilling, like being on the floor, because it's like it's 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 like being on a live stream, I guess. Yeah, I, I find this incredibly thrilling oh, and absolutely. challenging as well. But like it's sort of like you know you you are responding back and forth with an actual human. Absolutely, you and, know, and and you have the, you have the opportunity to either make their night and make sure they have the best possible or, experience or <laughs> completely screw it up, um, which I really hope I don't do too often to those who are watching that I've served. Um, but um, yeah, it's just it's just that opportunity that you get to really make their night special is, is one of the real perks of my job, I find. All right, so is it is it all about the, um, you know, you talked about the theoretical, and I, I gather what that means is, you know, you're talking about how, you know, wine flavours intermingle with food. And, absolutely. And, you know, different uh, vintages and how they're maturing and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so is is the theoretical, does that outweigh the practical? No. If someone wants, absolutely not. you know, grange with their ice cream. I am going to sell them their grange every single day. <laughs> yeah. um, I was always taught that if you enjoy a wine, regardless of the price, regardless of the style, with a certain food or something like that, you just let them do it. It, it yeah. might not pair mag magnificently, but that might have a special meaning to them. They might have yeah. had grange as they pr proposed to their, to their then fiance, to their girlfriend when they were. Yeah, so um, do, at that point, it doesn't. The, the, the theory doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It just goes out the window. It's like, oh, and and it, and, I've, and I've seen it done before. You know, if you sell them something that you know might pair beautifully with ice cream, they'll come back and, and you'll go to them and say, "Oh, how was the pairing?" They'll be like, I really wanted that Grange though. I just wanted to have the Grange for my ice cream. You can't take it away from people, in my opinion. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. It's you know valuing people's happiness absolutely you know above all, all else and their enjoyment of the venue enjoyment mm. of the night. No, um, it's um, very important. What is one of the toughest food and wine pairings for you personally that you just every single time you're like you know chef goes guys guys, I have the dish to go on the next menu. Oh, and yeah. you're sitting there just going. So I have I been gonna... blessed to work with artichokes quite a bit in my career. Oh. So I used to work. At, at the Royal Mail Hotel, which you had a kitchen garden, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Artichokes course. came pretty, were pretty big in artichoke season. Yeah, and um, it was always just a stupid thing to pair with because it's so like fibrous and it's yeah, yeah, bitter. Yeah. And if you if you send it one way, it goes to like metallic, and if it goes another way, it just completely fucks it. So um, <laughs> it, yeah, so um, I was delighted to see that um, not only did. Um, uh, I love the executive chef put an artichoke dish on the menu. I was I was overjoyed by that, but then I had to explain it to the, uh, the to the staff on how to pair with it. But uh, to his credit, though, the dish is amazing. So there's other elements. So how? how well, it. okay, because there's many many different ways. I, I, I I've had artichokes before. Yeah. Um, it's not like you have raw artichokes. You have to actually cook them some way. Yeah. Or cure them some way. Yeah. So what what do you usually go to with an artichoke? I tend to go with its with its with its accompaniments because it's yeah yeah yeah. So, so like how it's been cooked? Is it in like cooked. a pickle? So yeah, you can go in like a been, riesling high yeah. acid thing. If it's been if it's been charred, you're going for something you know that will work off that charry flavour. Yeah. So with um with the current artichoke dish on our menu, it's uh, very much a like a dashi macadamia, it's like a real like brothy sort of um, dish so I try to just, just, uh, just backtrack backtrack yeah dashi like like a dashi broth like, yeah like, like a dashi broth, broth with, and with macadamia macadamia miso sh trouble shaved over the top it is amazing um, <laughs> why have I not heard of this um, I don't know what macadamia miso is that sounds fucking awesome <laughs> it's pretty awesome I'm not gonna lie um, but I kind of tend to go towards a pinot because it's kind of got those dark earthy truffly sort of notes that might overpower everything so 
that's tend to, but again, artichokes are just the bane of my existence at this point in time. Um, well, jumping onto the comments, Double Butt Live, um, is this live? Yes, it is. We are uh, live. On, on Twitch. We are, we are on Twitch in a different category tonight. Uh, the Just Chatting category, yes, you can ask questions and yes, we will more than likely answer them. Unless you're a troll, at which we won't. Um, but <laughs> sometimes we do answer trolls. Just be creative. Do something different. For yeah. a change. What is the most uncouth food and wine pairing? Like the one that's literally just gone, you know what, this, this, you know, when you go out on the floor with it, you're doing Degos. Yep. And you, you literally come back, you know, get out there and people are like, wow, I didn't actually think this would work. But that, that, that comment happens a lot. Yeah. Like, I didn't think this was going to work, but yeah, you, you've nailed it. With you've nailed one. it. Yeah. Um, I, it's one of those ones where you get a dish that's, I, I tend to try and go, if it, it's, if I go a weird dish, I kind of go for a conventional wine and vice versa. So yep. trying to keep them, like I, I try to like live on the daring side of pairing sometimes, but- um, Is that a thing? Is it, it like a leaning Evan, is cleaning? Yeah, you know, Evan- The Evan, daring side of pairing? There's, no, there's two, there's two books, like <laughs> there's books. MS has written a book about um, perfect pairings and daring pairings. It's, it's, they're great reads, so. That's wicked, I have yeah. no idea. So, um, some of these ones, that. some of these seafoody ones, you kind of apply a classic one, which is like, I, they call it the lemon wedge rule. So anything that needs, that will require a lemon wedge on the dish, you just pair with something with like, like high acid. So it's like pretty, reasoning ish. So it's pretty, pretty sound. It's pretty sound. And that's, yeah. that's, that's my one wood. That's the one that I go to. But sometimes you kind of, you try and go somewhere a little bit different. You try and go to something like a, it's a bit more oaky Chardonnay or something like that. That's a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you've just got, you've just got to play with the dish, but there's been a couple along the line, but uncouth pairings. I have, you, have you ever gone like red with fish? Yeah, Have absolutely. you ever broken the rules? Just like, fuck the rules, don't worry about it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I did a, I did a, a bit of barramundi at, um, I can't remember where I was, but had it with a Pinot Noir from by far. It was just amazing. That actually, that actually sounds pretty. That sounds pretty. And funnily, funnily enough, funnily Maybe it's enough, just by far Pinot, but you know, by far Pinot. You know, it's just crazy, anyway. But 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 as a matter of fact, when I, I went to and and I was dumbfounded by this, I went to Voudemont to dine a couple of, couple of weeks later, and yeah, we had the Barramundi collar there. And what do you see there as the pairing? Oh no way! Yeah, by Pino. far, I think it was too prey. I was just like, you stole my dinner. <laughs> you stole my line. <laughs> well, did do collective conscious. Do you like when you go out being a som yeah. and, and you know loving wine? Um, do you do what I do uh, and and order the wine first and just find whatever the food's going to go with that? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So, do you find that ironic that like you you would typically theoretically attack things in the opposite way? You know, you start with the food and you're matching the wine to Absolutely it for a customer not. because. I have a grandmother that w that looks at the dessert menu before she looks at the main menu, so it's just normal to me to not look at the main menu. <laughs> so I have a girlfriend okay. that does that. <laughs> you can vouch. Yeah. Can I just say that's the most honest answer to that question I have literally ever had, and I love it that it involved your grandmother. That's too good. Uh, jumping onto the comments. Um, hello, enjoying a couple of classes at five o'clock somewhere tonight. Well, Kerry, say good day to the crew down there. Um, <laughs> 2KW, awesome place, coming in from Kerry Carter. Thanks Thank so much you, for joining me, Kerry. Um, Spurs back this uh, this week, Dan, uh, from Shane Gould, mate of yours. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're losing badly though, but that's the way it goes. So. So, uh, Kerry Carter, early 2000s Coriol Sangiovese as, as a Genesis wine, a wine that really yeah. sort of gets you yeah. into things. Uh, Aaron Laura here, Henschke Abbott's Prayer. Adelaide like Hills Cab Merlot, that is. Bloody good wine. That is a very good and wine. aged so beautifully as well. Uh, coming in from Kerry, is there any cooking technique that makes wine pairings really difficult? Cooking technique. Are cooking technique. Like charred over fire. We're talking about, I'm going to pickle everything. Pickling, uh, pickling, absolutely. Pickling yeah? all day. Like sometimes the pickle, get, you, you just, you, until you taste the dish, you can't really, you can't really yeah. see that level of pickling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes yeah. they've just been absolutely smithered in just yeah. in brine and you just don't know what's going to happen. So. Um, so okay. Pickling is, is is the enemy sometimes, but you know if you if you when you're good enough you can you can get it done, which yeah it's good. Fino, just with everything. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, no. Love me a good manzanilla. <laughs> yeah. What about um like what about if you know talking about like dashi and and obviously mm. this macadamia miso? I I can't get that off my brain right I'll now. I'll see you in I'll see you on Friday. I'm then, going. Yeah, yeah I'm, I want to go try this bloody macadamia miso. Yeah. Um, I'm down there on Thursday. Actually, you open? Absolutely. You're, you're Absolutely. open. You, how often are you open? Two kilometers. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Lunch and dinner. Boom. 
Boom. I'll see Macadamia you miso is going to be in my life in the next uh, <laughs> next five days, I assure you that. Yeah. But that must be umami rich. Oh, very much so. That must be like a lot of umami. Where, where, what are your go-tos for umami? Umami? I, sherry is a, a, obviously a great one. Is it like that friend? rancio effect? Absolutely, absolutely. But I, I love like a good, uh, especially with that dish, like a lovely rustic, like rusticity in the in the in the in the wine. So sort of like I've okay. got, we've got like with that dish like a henty pinot like from I've got Hockersh yeah, on the list, which is yeah, like real yeah, sort yeah. of like Spatbergunda style, yeah, like yeah, German yeah. pinot. It's just got that like. The earthiness about it—it just goes really well. With it, I think it's got Hosh Kirsch. Yeah, is, is how it's how I believe Hosh so. Kirsch. I've actually not had that one in a while, but um, that's probably the most. This is why I really like Soms because I think about this shit, man. Like, <laughs> like calling it a Schmattburg and a style is so accurate. Yeah, I, and I'm always like, oh, it's really just like ethereal and like herbaceous and stuff, and it doesn't even remotely accurately describe it. Of course, unless you've had Schmattburg and a, I guess you don't know what that is either. But it's actually quite quite accurate. There, there mm. is some incredible because oh, Germany's quite colder. Oh, absolutely. Than so, than than uh, Hinty and and oh, absolutely. Like most, if not all, of Australia. But I can but tell why you from personal experience, it does get quite cold down in Hinty though. So yeah, almost as cold as, as Gamaraka. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, <laughs> well, Yuko's just chimed in. Uh, Yuko uh, is is uh, her original uh, homeland. Uh, well, her homeland now is Australia. Yuko, yeah, absolutely. Uh, is, is from Japan. Um, macadamia, what? Yes, it's yes. Like macadamia, macadamia miso spumer as well. Like it's just crazy. It's crazy. I'm, I'm down. I will report back Yuko on, on what I find. Uh, Deb Dolores, hi, hi. Thanks so much for chiming in. Uh, Kerry, is that your secret weapon for wine pairing? The one hit wonder crowd pleaser that goes very like. What is like? What's the one thing that you're like? You know what? I'm just gonna have to to go with this because we're not gonna be able to satisfy everyone. Ah, this is yep. the, this is the crowd pleaser. This is the. When you don't know what to get, you just Blind get by this. the city of your pants, sort of like, yeah. Oh no, I'm screwed here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna you play have, in the middle. I'm playing you have in the middle. an entire table full of Karens. Oh, beautiful! And you can't risk this shit. No, you know? so that's when I will. I there, we've got a, we've got a menu that's quite share heavy. So there's quite well at the what was before obviously the circumstances changed around yeah. the country and the world um that being said you get quite a few people that would order fish and then order like beef or lamb or something like that at the same yeah. time they'd be like dan tell me a wine that's gonna work with everything like this i'm like <laughs> no worries um it's called a I love, beer um <laughs> it's got a beer <laughs> but, um, nebbiolo nebbiolo is my oh wow nebbiolo is my get, for out, real? get out of my jail get out of jail free card it seriously is, yeah so it's kind of got that it's got that Talk about daring pairings fuck that's gnarly so why got, well lamb shoulder steak needs a tannin it's yep. like charred steak see needs, where he's going needs with this. a tannin and uh, needs a tannin needs the acid cut through maybe some wagyu or something like that but then again isn't too full-bodied so it doesn't drown the fish either so it really does work quite quite well that is pretty gnarly and especially if the fish comes with like dashi like if you're going down the umami path mm. it's probably going to be fine anyway yeah but you just want to you just want that acid to really work off the to cut through the so the the gelatinous nature of the fish but you don't want it to be too um too full-bodied to really just kill it off so that's my that's my middle ground that's my please everyone that's my um, Is every please me Nebbiolo all the time? Absolutely, you know, every day. That's just what we should be drinking. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> what even our gums can't even feel them anymore. Oh, hey? <laughs> just that, just the, yeah, just that, just the yeah. like the enamel on your teeth, just eating away into it. Uh, well, Dolores, hi from Ireland. I, I think it's the first first person chiming in from Ireland ever. Thank you. That's what time is it there? It must be like seven in the morning. Uh, another Nebhead, Stephen Harris. Thanks so much for chiming in, Stephen. Uh, love you. What's your top Australian neb? You don't need to say us. Like, what is your top Australian okay, neb? Okay, so What's the I, one that's made you buy? Uh, well, I'm going to give you three because I can't split these three. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. So I've got um, Luke Lambert, which I love. Don't love Luke Lambert yeah. Nebbiolo. Yeah. Um, I think Steve Pennell makes yeah an the original the OG the Nebbiolo. But the one that I the one that I love at the moment is um, Peter Godden's oh, Revo. Revo. Like, yeah. 07, it is just crazy. For, it's, for it's, my palate, it is crazy. It's really hard to find uh, Nebbiolo that is in so like got so much age, yeah. and actually been made with so much class. And you know, outside of what he does, his work with the university and the AWRO, mm. um, he actually did like vintages out of Vietti as well. Wouldn't surprise me because that wine is just crazy. He is the biggest, and you know what, Stephen? There's another word you need for this. There's Nebhead. We call them Nebophiliacs. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, I assure you, I assure you, Peter Godden is probably the biggest nephrophiliac I've ever, I've ever so seriously the, met. The only way I got his wine onto the list was I was. Um, I was at the Royal Adelaide Wine Show doing a bit of social judging and he's like, I've got this neb that you need to try. I've got this neb that you need to try. And I'm just like, no, go away. I've got stuff to do. And then, so like, cause he's on, and of course he's on the committee as well. So I'm kind of like going, mm, got to be nice though. Um, and then we, I finally taste this neb and it just blew my mind. I'm like, it's next I level. See, I see what you're getting at now. It's next level. It's absolutely next level. It's 8.45 a.m. in Ireland right now. That is insane. Well, uh, It's dedication. Um, and I suppose only the Irish could be drinking with us at this time. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, uh, Dolores. Um, now, there's a question that, that has been burning in my mind, and I'm pretty confident it's only been burning in my mind, yep. as a lot of questions typically do. Um, when you're transiting, what is the appropriate like wine to choose? Like, I'm talking like you're about to board a plane, uh, or you're on a you're on one of the Shinkansen in in Japan, yep. and you know, appropriate place to drink. Yeah, you know, if I say so. Yeah. So what? How? Like, what are you drinking? Riesling. Chen. 100% correct. Riesling. <laughs> Ding. Facts. Um, no. Explain. Please explain Riesling. So Riesling is just one of these one one of these wines to me that yes, there is a lot of complexity to them, and I love Riesling for that very much. But they're just on a on a car rip, tri, car ride or a plane or a train or whatever. They're just really easy to smash too. You can you can look at them and you can say that's a really good wine. And then they can just disappear. Just and you're like, yeah, where did yeah, they yeah. go? <laughs> yeah, that's their ultimate deletable wine. Is it absolutely like really good reasoning? You just go, where the fuck did that go? <laughs> <laughs> In actual yes. fact, that is the mark of a good read. Yeah, that is fantastic. Uh, probably probably the, the coolest answer to that question. Also, uh, I've I've had in a while. Do you have a particular set of favorite varieties or wine styles that you just jump out the chance to drink with monotonous regularity? Like if you're, you're, you, uh, you it's sort of like a derivation of yeah. having, having, it's the Karen situation, except yeah. no more Karens, it's just you. And just you me? just, you're just like, you're wrecked at the end of the day and you're rolling into the bottle shop and you're like, uh, uh, that one. Um, so uh, I love, I love drinking Pinot Noir, but when I roll in at the end of the night, I don't want to think about, think about Pinot Noir because it's just, it's just too much thought for me. So again, I'm going to stick with Riesling on this one because there's just right. That's really. I just, I just on on a hard after a long hard day of being a sommelier, I just crave a Riesling. So is that like is that like a long like because we do this obviously during vintage and when we're judging wine shows, the one yeah. thing we want to drink is a lager. Absolutely but, shitty, uh, shitty beer. Oh, that too. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I don't. But it's like you Riesling, see? the Somme's lager. Oh, I wouldn't go. I, I can't speak for every song, but I, I do love a good Asahi as well. So we could wrong, do we so. could do some Riesling and we could do a collab and we'll call it Som's Lager. Oh, I like that. I like that. Let's make that happen. Let's do it. We Let's could, do we, it. We, we have we have the technology. Oh, stop it. Uh, is is expensive wine just expensive because of rarity? Some of the best wines I've had were cheap. Okay. Um, Coming in from Twitch. Rarity. Oh, some some wines, yes. Um, you'll find, like in Australia, you know the the DRCs, the Domaine de la Romagne Contest, Penfold Ranges, and Hensky Hill Graces, They don't make a whole lot of it, yeah. so then they jack up the price. Well, not the Hensky's, obviously. No, um, <laughs> but, no, no that, but it would be expensive because of the fact that a they don't make a lot of it, and b there would have been a lot of time, effort, vineyard sort of situation mm. going into it. There's a lot of stuff on the back end that they've got to think about when they set this price. In my opinion. Is it is is some of the cheap wines? Have you been surprised sometimes? Oh, absolutely, when you... absolutely. So, um, funny funny fact: I actually worked in a bottle shop for six weeks during COVID happened. And, oh right, and Sick. That, yeah, that was that was great. But the one thing I learned from the people in there is that you can't judge a wine if you can judge a wine over fifteen anything over fifteen dollars. You know that I get it for. Yeah, or like so let's say a twenty dollar wine. If you can judge that to be a good wine, and you can do that with regularity, you're a pretty good taster. The best tasters are the one that can taste the $5 to $15 wines and say, yeah, yeah. this is better than this. Yeah. So not all wines have to, are, are good because they're expensive, and not all wines are expensive because they're good. We should do, we should, we used to do this on our blind tastings, Noah. What do you reckon that we, we the last question should be, what price do you think this is? Yeah. Oh, oh, I reckon that is, I reckon, oh, no, no. no <laughs> it's good, it's good. I think it's a yeah, really no, fair question. Imagine. It's it's a it's a really good question where it actually like gets down to like, would you buy it or would you not buy it? You know you know you know when you go, that how much is of that is a bargain. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's part of being the psalm as well. You you've got to be able yeah. to see value in wines and yeah. and be like, well, would I pay X amount of dollars? And more importantly, would the customer pay X amount of dollars? 
this wine, yes or no? Um, yeah. And that's re- that's generally the reason why they go on the list because the answer is yes, but I, yeah. would I pay that sort yeah. of money for it? Well, Kerry Carter's trying to be Riesling, mad in my own heart, love a Riesling. And I want to know from people at home as well, what are you, because I remember Riesling used to be sort of regarded as this super sweet, sticky thing that was just completely bastardized, probably in the, the 80s, maybe 70s or 80s. Do you still have that stigma? When you think Riesling, is that what you're thinking of? Because you're probably hearing us going, it's like lager, it's steely, it's crisp, it's mineral, it's it's tight metallic. Mm. Like, are you able to actually sort of bring that together with what you actually think Riesling is? It's sort of like what happened with Chardonnay. Oh you yeah, know, Chardonnay with- Yeah, ABC, anything but Chardonnay. Anything but Chardonnay. The, the same people yeah. smashing Chablis and oysters. Oh yeah. I don't like Chardonnay. It's made from Chardonnay, dickhead. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, that, that, that's, that speaks to me. That really does speak to me. It's, 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 it's the same thing. I just love champagne as well. It's like, oh, it's, it's all like, oh, I'm going to Chardonnay um, You know, in my bottle shop experience, most people buy the 15 to $20 bottle, but I find that price range so hit and miss. Uh, Got to kiss a few frogs to find the princes. That's why you have people in those shops that yeah. do their stuff. You Man, I did eight right years person. of bottle shop work. Yeah. Eight years of yeah. retail, and I had some of the most uh, like fun times. Oh, they're, there. they're great. I Absolutely really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Um, it's it's another whole, it do, I don't feel it's got the pressure of, of working the floor. No, because um, you don't have to go back to them and say, are you enjoying this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly right. Exactly right. And typically, there's a long period of time mm. before they come back to exactly you and give you bad right. feedback. Exactly so right. It definitely, it definitely helps. Um, well, you've been fortunate enough to do some wine show judging before. Yes, indeed. Um, how do you find the process of show judging is distinct from working as a song? So do you feel that people can just trust the show system and not have to worry about a song because they read the, the you know results? I see that oh there's an article I, I read about this once it's um like a sommelier and a and a wine show or wine critic essentially um it's like a, a tailor and a fashion magazine okay so you read okay. the you read the fashion magazine okay and they tell you what's going to be in what's going to work and it's going to work on you but they don't know what you look like whereas the sommelier is the tailor who has done the measurements knows what's going to look good on you and just makes you look a million dollars that's the way i look at it there mm. Damn, we're gonna get you on again because, like, you, you you were just describing things in ways that I've I've honestly honestly never heard them described before. That is probably Thank one you. of the most most elegant ways to navigate that. Thank you, I appreciate that's, it. That's incredible. Um, well, thank you, Dan. Love a great great bottle shop, Recos um, Riesling from Justin. Riesling uh, was our entry into wine. Have a ton of it in our cellar. Prob uh, is our palettes have developed now and looking for something a little more uh, than acid and a little sweetness. Mm. Well, that's one of those beauty- beauties about Riesling is that it pays, it, it's it's the gift that keeps giving. Like Absolutely. when you get it young and fresh, it tastes young and fresh. And if you're in for something young and fresh, that's fantastic. Absolutely. But it can mature so incredibly well. I, I mean, I'm, I'm hard pressed to find in terms of dry white wine styles and, and, and mm. varieties, any other great variety that has the propensity to age as well as Riesling. No, because you can get Riesling back to what, the 20s and yeah. oh, even, even, even earlier. further. It's, even just, further. it's just crazy what they can do. What, without, without just so a, much acid, they just hold together. Without it being fortified like a Madeira or mm. treated like the, these white varieties that just, you know, absolutely. Oh, Riesling it's pretty it's much crazy. Like, it's crazy how long they go. Here. And they can still look good at that age too. It's just mm. crazy. You can have like a 20 to 30 year old Riesling just like, nah, I'd leave it for another 20 to 30. I've, oh, I've absolutely. had that heaps of times oh, yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even I was fortunate enough, one of my first gigs actually working in South Australia was at Richmond Grove. Oh, okay, um, beautiful. And uh, we had, so they were one of the ones that were doing the early trials uh, with uh, John Vickery was behind yep. all the, the Rieslings there. Yeah, beautiful. You know, the great, the great John Vickery. Yep. Uh, and he was the one that trialed all the sort of um, uh, cork and screw cap trials. Yeah, trials. yeah. And you could still, when I was there, um, you could buy just straight off the list for like 30 bucks a bottle, like 97, 96, oh, yeah. 95s. And, and they're incredible drinking. Absolutely incredible drinking. Well, I tried a, when I was at the Royal Mail, um, Big Boss opened up in 1998, close and hewn, and we just looked at it and we're kind of like, that is tight as a drum. We will not be looking at that for another 20 years. It was just crazy. You remember what these things might taste like in their absolute youth? Like how yeah, they, they would just, they would, just, they would be. It'd be like that Home of Symphony of Lemon, it'd just be like, <laughs> in verse. In verse. <laughs> Well, we're halfway through, um, and you have brought a blind tasting wine. We're going to enter the part that everyone loves. Uh, we're going to talk about some blind tasting. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always impressed, uh, to be honest, and, and ever so curious 
when people bring on two wines instead of one wine because the first one could be fucked. Absolutely. <laughs> Which hey. makes me, it's, it becomes a thrill. No, no, but failure to plan is failure to fail. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone else done it? Brought on two bottles of wine because one might be cooked? There's a few, there's a few, there's a few that have, uh, there's a few that have. One that I remember. Um, Average size man chiming in from Twitch. We can, he's, he's just uh, talking about the, um, the music. Mate, give me half a second. Give me half a second. I'm going to turn that down for you. I was trialing a, a few different music levels recently. Let us know if that sounds any better for you. Um, because I've, I've just turned it down a little bit for, for y'all at home. Um, it's all about you guys. Keep in mind, it's not normal. All no. about us. Do you need a RSO? No, we will be good. I actually did the BYO RSO today as well. I brought my. Oh, did you? I did. Oh, I just so thoughtful. I didn't think I didn't know if I'd be opening it or not, so I just I just <laughs> yeah. thought I'd do it. It's just RSOs. I reckon you should open all bottles. I mean, obviously not bottles with a screw cap. No, that'd yeah. be a little bit. Well, uh, I think you should. <laughs> yeah, what well, champagne bottles? And well, I've got um, I've got one of those Duran ones that have got the two part bit, and I wouldn't, I would oh, not have, yeah. I would not have, I would not go anywhere without it. So. Mm. Mm. Well, it's actually, actually quite interesting because when working in a previous venue, the, one of the big bosses ordered a, it was a 96, 96 Burgundy or something like that. And me being very young and naive, just stuck in a you know little one step to one step um, uh, corkscrew, and it just and the just cork absolutely shit itself. Um, <laughs> and then um, so and I'm like, it's a big boss. It's a Burgundy. It's a Burgundy. So it's kind of like, well, I can't just decant this. I can't just stick it in and decant it. So I um, got my restaurant manager and, my, and myself were just trying to get out this bit by bit with this tiny little corkscrew. And we finally got it out. I don't think we breathed for a good couple of minutes because we're because we're shitting ourselves. And it comes out. It finally comes out. No cork in the bottle. And we just and I can always remember it. My restaurant manager goes, "That was some hurt like a shit right there." <laughs> It's like hard to shoot yourself when your sphincter's like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. All right, so what do we, what do we, this is, this is, this smells incredible. This is definitely, this is definitely not um, ruined at all. This is incredible, mate. Mm. This is, this is gorgeous. This is, uh, this is classic. You know, I've sho shoved the comments down so Noah feel free to let, let everyone know Ooh, what's up. Yeah, that's a good bottle. Oh, I'm, I'm just entranced by the age on this because mm. I think it's, I think it's, if you've got any more bottles of this, you want to be opening them. That's yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's right, starting it's, to, it's right to, in a good, it's in a good spot. It's just, just a little bit. So this is actually, oh, um, this is gnarly. So this is actually how the two KW seller. I think this, I think this is the last <laughs> bottle we've got. So I, I did get this cleared. I promise. <laughs> That's okay. You've got, you've got one more. Yeah. Uh, one more. yeah. They, thankfully, um, no one's been fired, uh, since appearing on the show. <laughs> That's oh, yet, right. yet, yet. <laughs> All right, so um, let's play. Uh, Noah, are you comfortable with options? I'm sure you're not over to Dan here. You, you want to play options? All yes, right, cool. let's do it. All right, cool. Well, firstly, I think it's a red wine. Excellent. Excellent. I think you are far. You've nailed that one. <laughs> um, new world or old world? See, that's that's the thing that's tripping me up uh, straight away off the bat because uh, of one particular, especially for those playing at home that are watching or listening as a podcast. Just so I can describe the flavors a little bit more for you guys. Um, there's like this has some evident age characteristics. We're talking about like you know some garbox tobacco. This is uh, a little bit herbaceous, but it has one particular character that really sort of leads me more towards New World, which is um, uh, it's respectful of of course, but so it's got a hint of VA. Um, and when I mean that, it's that sort of nail polish remover. It's just kind of like sit, sitting, sort of framing everything. That tells me mm. typically would have a little bit higher ABV, higher amounts of alcohol. Um, which would, which I tend to not see in a lot of old world wines, unless they're from like the Rhone Valley, unless they're from like areas that do get warmer vintages. Mm -hmm. um, and even then only relatively recent. So um, I'm going to say this is new world. And it's old world. Oh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Can't yeah. win them all. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, all right. It's old world. So we've got uh, great varieties. I'll give you three. Well, let's go countries. Let's go countries. All right, let's go countries. countries. Yep. Yeah. I'd rather go. I'd rather go, go grape varieties. varieties. Go okay. Go grape okay. Varieties okay. Okay. There's the methodology here. Yeah. Okay. There's method to my madness. Please okay. trust me. 
Yep. Um, so we've got Tempranillo, we've got ah. Cabernet, and we've got Syrah. And it's a single variety? Is it a... Mainly. 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 So okay. we're talking like minuscule amounts of okay. the other ones. Oh yeah, so just give me a minute. It's actually really delicious wine. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go Tempranillo. Cabernet. Serious? Yeah. Right, this what? is interesting. Yep. Yeah? 100%. It's not yeah, 100% right. Cabernet, but it is, it is a very much Cabernet dominant blend. Yeah, right, okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of the next question because I'm trying to think of a third country that does Cabernet that I'm trying to think of. What do we got? We got we got France, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Wait, what? We have we have Really? <laughs> uh, you could Italy. go Italy. Yep. Uh, and you could go in terms of old world. Yep. Morocco. <laughs> All right. Um, let's think. Is it from France? Is it Morocco? Or is it Lebanon? Wow. Fucking wow. Is this a red herring or not? A little bit of one. I, I came in here trying to fuck you up a little bit. So, is this a Musa? You nailed it. Yeah. It is a Musa. Far out, man. This is, I've not seen Chateau Moussa with age. Like, this is insane. Yeah. This yeah. is insane. This is a Lebanese Cabernet, like, predominant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you didn't go country. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you would have got it. You would have straight away. Out. That was so weird because we were talking about Chateau Moussa, like, yeah, like literally, know. like, an well, hour ago. Well, the it was like, <laughs> Sam was really, I, 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 I told him what wine it was, and I mean, you were talking about Chateau Moussa, I'm like, mm. Don't, don't, don't make a look. Don't make a look. That, okay. All right. Vintage. Vintage. Let's 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 have a crack at vintage. Okay. Um, Ninety-five to two thousand, two thousand one to two thousand five, or two thousand six to two thousand ten. Uh, I think I think it's I think it's like two thousand one to two thousand five. Nope. Like, it's ninety-five to it's nineteen ninety-seven. Nineteen ninety-seven. Pretty cool. This is this is a like a twenty two year old Lebanese wine. Yep. No, twenty three. Twenty three is it? Twenty three. Yeah, 23. yeah 97. right. 97. Well, when's their vintage in Lebanon? Yeah, good, is no, it, good point. Good yeah, point. When is their vintage be, in Lebanon? It'd be, it'd be late. If it's not the you reckon? Oh, it's, it's around October. They finish. Yeah. They finish okay. October eleventh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is insane. That is insane. I want to. I want to see what this thing looks like. Because here's the bottle. Here's the unopened bottle. Oh, so you literally, oh, you literally brought two bottles just in case. Oh, wow. In you case like, one was fucked. Yeah, that um, is so cool. I really wanted to show you this one. That's that is all. so cool. Oh, Check yeah. this out, guys. Um, so this is available on the market right now. Okay. BC. Are we gonna, are we gonna what be do you reckon it? retail price is? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Chateau Moussa retail price. Retail for this price. vintage or for, for this for this for this exact vintage. Okay. Okay, I have, uh, I have a listing up for it right in front of me. Okay, so I'm I know the current release is like sitting up in the 70, 80 buck mark, and I would assume the rarity of this is going to bump that up a little bit more. Um, and so I'm going to be in like the one fifty. This is in uh, Sterling Wine Auctions uh, are selling this right now for eighty dollars. Yeah, bottle. right. And I reckon that's a bargain. Because... That's a fucking bargain. <laughs> Where else do you get to try it? Like Shadow Musar is like. It's, and that's a reason why when, as soon as Lebanon is suggested, typically I would jump straight to Shadow Bizar. Yeah, so I was discussing with one of my managers, so I'm like, how am I going to try and trip him up on country? And I, I was going to be, I was going to come in and go like, <laughs> is it Bordeaux, <laughs> is it Rioja, or is it, oh, I don't know, uh, Mate, Lebanon. We, Lebanon. We, and make me an earn R on the third one. Like I was trying to make yeah. one up, but then, I, and then he was like, no, nah, he was still getting it. The, the, it was still cool, the yeah. best way to do it, after doing this probably 90 odd times, deadpan, same delivery for each of them. Yep, yeah. gotcha. All Thank you. Yeah. Keep that in mind. <laughs> that is, Same that is absolutely insane. Uh, thank you so much for bringing this on the show because, uh, and this actually brings me to my next next question. We talk quite a lot about because I reckon this really sits in there. This is one of those. This is a sleeper. 
This is this is sleeper one. But we talk about big label energy. Oh yeah. So we talk about this this concept where you know you go out with uh, your mates, and then there's like there's mates that you go out with just to have fun and drink. Um, well, sorry, drink and have fun. Um, and then there are mates that you go out with that are like industry mates. Yeah. And, you know, there's a bit of professional jealousy, a bit of professional tension. Yep. You know, so you're like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna show you oh, what yeah. I'm made of. I'm going to slap down this bottle right here yep. and, you know, mic drop on it. Absolutely. And it's got what we call big label energy because it's not always about the wine that's inside the bottle. That, no. can, that is actually, it's indifferent. It could be really good, really bad. It's actually completely indifferent. It's actually all about the label. Yeah. Absolutely. This for me is a sleeper big label energy. Oh yeah. And I think it actually, this is one of those ones that deep down inside, I'm going to press this button. We have most definitely big label energy. Thank uh, you. With Chateau Moussa. It's been a while <laughs> since we've hit that button. <laughs> oh, to be honest, it's been a bit of a so, dry spell. So touched. We haven't, had many, we haven't had a song one for a while. We haven't had a song one for a while. <laughs> fact, every song that we have had on, it has been literally a roll call of big label energy though. So what for you as big label energy, what are the what are the wines that you're just like, yeah, okay, that's totally like, when my mates crack that out, it's it's totally it's, just it's, it's, like, it's all it's over. A it's fest. all over. Yeah, yeah. no. Um, D Francois Raveneau, like Chablis, yeah. So, <laughs> it's so it's if someone, if someone, if someone just walks in, in into like a what vintages of Raveneau do you have? <laughs> yeah, no, or, no, 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 or, or someone just one of my mates walks in and just you know tea chow or whatever with you know where you, you can have oh, all those bottles classic, and just classic. bangs down a bottle of Raveneau and you're just like oh fuck I've got to get something good now like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's another one is um, Armand Rousseau Rousseau yeah so sitting firmly in the Chablis. Territory, but uh, Russo, you Jevre, Jevre, Jevre. Okay. Yeah. Well, do do you think outside, do you, outside of Burgundy, outside of Burgundy, are there yeah. BLEs? Are there? Yeah, other absolutely, wines? there is. Like, like, like for me, probably the crowning one from Italy would be Frank Canellison. Oh, Giacomo Conterno as well. Oh, love me a bit of Giacomo Conterno. That's a good one. Yeah, because it's not because we wine mates. It's not about. How much they cost sometimes it's about how hard you, you, you have yeah, to try to rarity. find them because sometimes like five of these bottles might get into the country yeah. and then if you've got one of them and you're drinking it at tea chow you're kind of like well yeah this that's got some serious big level energy yeah i am king of tea chow for this evening <laughs> <laughs> here is your crown sir <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's I, everyone look at how awesome i am yeah, yeah it's uh, pretty much like that overnight Oh overnight, yeah, overnight. yeah. Um, nice. That's that fantastic. Reese Griffiths, thanks so much for chiming in. Um, Som life. Yep. We talk about you know with 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 degradation to be honest. Yeah. The integrating of it. Hashtag Som life. I might frequent that, <laughs> that, that hashtag quite a bit, but you know what? Unashamedly as well. Unashamedly, like what is? I mean, there's there's you know that that meme that goes around Facebook where it's like you know what my family think I do, yeah. what my friends think I do, what I actually do. Yeah. Is Som life as good as it's cracked up to be? I I love the Som life, so I'm a little <laughs> bit biased. But it is a lot of looking at reports too. So you know, okay. it's, it's it's not it's not it's not just hey, I'm just going to do some tastings for the next ten hours. It's it's a lot of work. Although some people at work would you know testify against that. But um, <laughs> it's it's it, there is work behind it, and there is a lot of you know number crunching as well. So it's not all just tasting wine. Well, outside of tasting wine, you've you've actually ventured. Um, you know, you've, you've moved around a little bit, moved around inside of Adelaide, yep. which is actually, it's amazing to see someone that's actually uh, managed to get to your, where you are right now. Not just not just where you work, but also the skill level that you have. Oh, thank you. That you've obtained and remained in, in Adelaide, but you weren't in Adelaide all the time. No. And you went out to the Royal Mail Hotel, which you mentioned, um, which is really quite, you know, we've been out there a couple of times. We do a gin collaboration with them. Oh yeah, um, beautiful. We, we forage their garden a different season and actually oh, yeah, do nice. the infusion uh, yeah, right yeah. there and there. And I'm I'm enamoured by the entire place. I think oh, it's, yeah. I think it's utterly fantastic, and what they're doing out there um, in what is quite possibly one. Of, I'm talking Dunkeld here. Yeah, it's quite possibly one of the most rural places. Oh yeah, flies in the face of opening any restaurant. You know, got to have foot traffic. Like, <coughs> yeah, they were. They were Dunkeld's got foot traffic mm. <laughs> once, once a day, maybe when the yeah. bus comes in. So, what um, was it like going from like where you were and are here, where it is fast paced and you're at you know the top of the game, going to somewhere rural, and where things are you know obviously happen at a different pace. It was interesting. I've, I've grown up in country towns like Victor Harbour and Mount Gambier a little bit, but like yep. the narrow courts and everything like that. So I had somewhat of an experience with country towns not to that level though so it was a bit of a it's like crazy it was like oh yeah i just need to go into town to 
buy some buy some toiletries or something like that and be like, right, so the next town that's got a Woolworths is about, you know, 45 minutes away. I'm like, yeah, cool. Shoot. Cool. Um, that's why they grow everything at Royal Mail. They couldn't be bothered driving. <laughs> Um, it's actually really cool. I went over. I went over there. I went over there with firmly entrenched in my mind that I was going to learn a lot about wine from that fabulous cellar over there, mm-hmm. and that's just where I stuck my mind onto. So, and did you? Oh, a whole lot. It's pretty nuts. So, so I've not been into the cellar, but correct me if I'm wrong. That the proprietor of the Royal Mail Hotel bought the house across the road, which is like a 19. 1970- it was a butcher's. It was a butcher's. It was a butcher's. Yeah, yeah, back yeah in the day. right. Yeah, and it's just literally lined the house in like. No, it's just it's a big shed now. It's a it's this this warehouse that is just packed to the brim with wine. It's twenty eight thousand bottles bottles of wine. When I was there, it is crazy. And some of the bottles there, like I'm talking like magnums of Latash from eighty five. Like there are some crazy wines in there. Do you know when they they uh, talk Speaking about? Speaking of big level energy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about like when when there's like a you know an apocalypse? And you know they they you know people repopulate the earth and whatnot, and they they you know go into somewhere like Scotland and they crack open a wall and they find like the greatest stash <laughs> of of whiskey yeah. they've ever ever seen. Like one day this may actually happen. We might go to like all like World War Three, yeah. we're all wiped out. Someone's finding themselves. I don't know why, but in Dunkeld, and they're gonna be like, "Wow, this was a capital city. Look at this cellar. Who would have this much wine out here?" I'm just I'm just imagining. When the, f- the bombs first start dropping, it's just like you're in Dunk Hill, you're at the wrong <laughs> hour, and then you you're hear- fine. No, 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 no. You just hear this rumble <laughs> over the, the tip of the Grampians, and there's just car after car of Psalms, <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> we know where we're gonna camp out. We got food, we can grow our own. We're- Maybe this is it. Maybe the Royal Mail is actually one gigantic, like, like prep yeah. for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Town in the middle of nowhere. See, I, was, I, I, I don't think I was in that conversation, but I think they had a department for it. Uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, well, you've you've nominated held meetings underground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've nominated yourself the vicar of Viognier on Instagram, which I actually quite enjoy. I love wine memes. Brenda yeah. Vino, myself. Yeah. Um, but do you genuinely love Viognier? I do. I love so, Condru, Chateau Grier. Okay, know. cool. Because yeah. I was going to ask, how the fuck do you actually enjoy Viognier? Because out of this, what oh. we've seen in this country, there's very few examples of Viognier that make me go. Holy crap! This is dope. That's why I stick to Conroe. But <laughs> that being said, though, that being said, though, I I, I can get around the Yama Vigilius as well. I, I do like that. Yeah. I, do, yeah. I think that's a really solid effort of, of Viognier in Australia, in like a hotter climate. Right. But for, yeah. for Viognier, it's it's always Conroe for me. And especially at the top of that game as well. Like oh, stopping yeah, Yolumba's game. Yolumba's really sort of hung their hat on Viognier. Oh yeah, and they do a really good job of it. So I, I think we should have someone from Yolumba on the show and actually convince me. You know, tell me I'm wrong. Viognier in Australia sucks. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I think it's fair. I think it's fair. I want to. I want to be wrong. I want to try the really dope Yonyes. Um, my words, not his. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brendan. Um, we are approaching the end of the show, um, and we can't let you leave without doing some blind tasting. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just screwed you around. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I have no idea. It's, oh, it's both. Right. We're both into it as well. Yeah, so beautiful. Take your pick. Um, uh, anyone at all? Literally anyone at all? Is go on the middle one. Yep. Cool. Noah. Thank you very much. Uh, he's gonna crack that open. No, am I getting rid of it? We're we getting. Uh, yeah, we can. I mean, you can get rid of it uh, yeah, internally or externally. But either way, you gotta get rid of it. <laughs> no, just send that one. Yeah. So I, I, I want to ask. So I jumped through. I do a bit of research. Uh, for, obviously, for every guest, um, because and I'm surprised to see some of the things that actually um, that people do outside of work. Because of yep. course, we talk a lot about wine. Wine. Wine is our life. It is what we love. Mm-hmm. Um, but jumping through your Instagram, and I've jumped through Instagrams and seen some really funny stuff. Yeah. Um, like, probably the pinnacle was Dan Graham's obsession with meat. It's like, <laughs> wine, 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 meat, 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 wine, wine, yeah. wine. And it's just, I'm just a normal guy. I'm like, yeah, but your, your Instagram says something different. You've been putting a lot of, a lot of effort. You've been working out. You, do, you yeah. do a lot of, you do a lot of stuff keeping yourself really fit. During ISO was obviously like a really big, and we're obviously kind of out of lockdown now. Yeah. Largely. Thanks, Noah. Thank you. Um, uh, we're out of lockdown largely in, in South Absolutely, Australia. Absolutely, yeah. How, how did you treat ISO life? Was it, uh, was it the wine or the workouts? Oh, a bit of both. A bit um, of both? You know, I, I, I'm obviously going for my next step for the Certified Sommelier course, and that was going to go ahead before it got postponed yep. later on in the year. So studying like a madman, drinking a lot of wine, but also I live with a personal trainer as well. So That's yeah. awesome. It's very, very handy. He's very good at what he does. Um, 
but he wouldn't let me get away with it, so I had to I had to train quite a bit. So it was good, it was good, um, and I really, really enjoyed it and appreciated it, but um, I was getting my ass kicked as well as trying a lot of wine. So it was, it was best of both worlds. That's incredible. I would love to I would love to live with a, a personal trainer, but um, uh, I live with an amazing winemaker. No, uh, hey. it's <laughs> <laughs> tomato, 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 really. Yeah, that's right. Um, so talk to us, we've got a wine here to be able to guess, but talk to us about 2KW. Um, I noticed that you, you did a stint there, yeah. and then you left and you came back. Yeah, so um, it's, it's sort of a running joke between the managers and I, because I've, I've actually got there, come, left, was there for a little interim just as a stopgap, left, and then I'm back. So um, I left to work at Rockpool for a couple of months there um, cool. in Melbourne. It just didn't... I didn't get as much out of it as I thought I was going to. Yep. Trying to remain politically correct here at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I kind of, of course. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really kind of my scene there. So yep. I came back and worked at, worked there for a little while, then went to Oji for something a bit more full time. Yep. Um, which I and really, Oji's fantastic. Really, uh, really I think that's where it. we we met. Yeah, I think, absolutely. Was actually at Over a bottle yeah. of uh, Bellotto Pellaverga. Oh my God, that was so good. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you were my, 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 you are like a mule. Yeah. Uh, you absolutely. helped me get my allocation of Pella Verga. Yeah. Which, for those uh, who were charming in at home, one of the tastiest wines out of Italy, full stop. Oh, absolutely. And it's cheap. It is. And it's rare. Um, it's really good. So, and then finished up there, and I loved Oji. Really, yeah. really enjoyed my time there. Learned so much from everyone, mm. everyone at Oji, but 2 we always felt like home. And, of course, yeah, and it's I just, familiar. And they were the headsome gig came up. Well, the headsome gig, gig came up and decided to move over there, and they took me back with open arms. And you know, like I can be a bit of a shit to deal with sometimes, and, <laughs> and, they, and they put up with me. So um, I'm very grateful for the opportunities that they've they've given to me over the years. So. Uh, are you the only certified som there? I or? am the only certified som there at the moment. That being yeah. said, there's a couple of people that work around me um, in wine wine capacities that either are going to be certified the next year or so, or I want to get them certified. I want to is it, is it one of those level. really good things with sort of younger people being able to like bring them in, kind of get them there really is psyched no, I, about I love, wine? I love, love, love teaching as much as I love learning. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I, I love to see. Um, so I've see other people at the table going, yeah, this has got beautiful acid or something like that. And I'm like, it does have lovely acid. Thank you for saying that. Because sometimes <laughs> they just want, they, they, sometimes you see people that are just like, I don't know enough about wine, I don't know if I can say this to a guest, but you're kind of like, if you know it, yeah, just yeah, say yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Just do your best, that's yeah. all I ask. Well, speaking of getting schooled, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna have a bit of fun here. I've shoved yep. the comments down. Noah can let you know what we are tasting. We have a new wine in the glass. She's looking closed. Very closed. Looking very closed. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Is it a red wine or a white wine, gentlemen? It's wine. It's wine. <laughs> oh yeah. I was oh, like yeah. deeply offended. I was like, I'm not calling you a wanker. Mm. It's white. Yep. It's white. Uh, new, new, new world or old world? I think this is old world. Yep. This is just divine. Mm. This is just divine. I told myself I'd only have three glasses of wine today because I'm trying to like, you know, watch the, the booze, but I'm going to delete this entire bottle. Mm. <laughs> this is awesome. Delicious. Um, yeah, it's it's old world. Mm -hmm. uh, is this from Germany, Austria, or France? Ooh, a couple of herrings there. Um, look, I'm gonna put my go with my gut on this one, and I'm gonna go France. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm gonna go France. This is France. Mm -hmm. It just tastes so French, doesn't it? Yeah, Damn it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, alrighty, is this from the Loire Valley? Is this from Burgundy? Is this from Condrieux? It's from Berg, man. It's fucking Chablis. It's, <laughs> it's surely. Mm. You don't think so? You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm the vicar of your so I'm gonna go Condrieux. You know, you hungry. You reckon you're okay, cool. I don't think it's good. It's, it's, it's pretty from a cool site. It's from Burgundy. Oh, damn it. I had, to go, I had to go with my heart. I had to go with my heart there. Go with the heart. Always go with the gut. I've The last mm -hmm. couple of shows, I've, I've gone with my head and it's been so wrong. I just don't, I think it's got too much, too much weight to be a Chablis. I think if it's going to be, if it's going to be a Berg, it's going to be something 
I, I just I can't see that being Chablis, but you know what? It's probably going to be a Chablis. And I'm going to get. I think it's like a 2018 super young. Yeah, and they're very generous. Super in fresh, as well. Super super fresh. Uh, you're right. It does have an oily oily body. Mm. It's got a whisper of it, but nothing really. No. Extensively flinty. Um, is probably the way I'd describe it. Mm -hmm. um, alrighty. Well, is this from Chablis? Is this from Cote d'Or or from the Macanay? Oh, you could have gone Macanay. Yeah, yeah. You reckon Macanay. I think it's Macanay. I think it's like I, a Sauvignon or a Puy Fusse. I'm sticking with my gut because I reckon it could be like a Petit Chablis. It could be like a or, a, or a, like stock standard, you know, hmm. like beige colored uh, Chablis. Um, I'm sticking with Shabs. Mac or no? Some code door. Oh, split the middle. <laughs> Boom. Um, We've upgraded. Yeah. <laughs> What's the variety? Oh. oh. You know what? Oh, that you know is... what? I got done with the same question at lunchtime. I swear to God, I got done with the same question. At the... That is Alagote if I have ever heard, seen it. Oh my that God. That is, it's not, it's not Chardonnay at all. It's Just Alagote. Just a second. Just a second. My restaurant manager took me out to lunch today and gave me the same quiz. And I said, "Oh, it's a macone," and then I, and he goes, "No, it's actually an alligote." I'll be done oh, by the alligote twice day. in one day. Oh, that is fantastic! Oh, all right, so all right, all right, vintage. Fucking alligote! Fucking oh, alligote! Always oh, alligote. That's a stitch up. It's the two ones that get me. Yeah. Every single alligote, Melonda begonia, which, funnily enough, doesn't grow in begonia. No, it's live no, alley. It's live alley. Muscadet. 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 <laughs> all right, cool. It's the melons from Burgundy. All right. Yes, this is Alagote. Um, vintage? I think this is fresh as. This is like... Might go 16, 17. I wouldn't go 18. I think, oh, it, I think it's 16. It, yeah. I think it's 16 because 16 was a... It's, it's showing a little bit of... Tiny little bit of age, but 16 was a much more... was a warmer year. It's more generous. It can't be 17, I don't think, because 17 was much cooler and it just has that rock, like, real acid drive in the 17s. Sticking with 18, just fresh as fuck. I'm splitting the difference again, this is 17. Oh no! Producer? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have wow. no idea. Don't oh, that's a yeah. good one. Yeah. That's a good this bottle. Is, this is from our bruddy uh, John O'Hurst at the French Wine Centre. I'm sorry, John, for getting that wrong if you're this, watching. This that's bad fantastic. boy retails for 38 bones. Yeah. I am into that. Yeah, like that's I am, good. I am genuinely in. That's it. that's like, delicious. That is, that's a case buy if I've ever seen it. Uh, you know, thirty-eight bucks. Oh, yeah. and Alagote is just sorry, really it's sold out. By the way, oh. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, it's sold out. <laughs> yeah, I, because a lot of people saw how much of a bargain this is. I think, yeah. I think, I think before we did, obviously. <laughs> I think someone should email. I'm sure jono has got a little bit at the back. Like maybe he's not uploaded enough to the website. It happens. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe he's got some. Honestly, it's uh, it's very, very, very impressive. Oh, like, that is that's amazing drinking. And Alagote as well is probably one of those great varieties that is is so so often overlooked. Oh yeah, because well. I mean, evidently, good Alagote is amazing, mm. but so so Alagote is very so so. I find there's a yeah. there's a big difference between good Alagote and average Alagote. Isn't um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The the old proprietor for uh, DRC Domain de la Romani Conti. Yeah, Aubert de Villain. Aubert he, makes a, he makes a he makes a as well. And yeah. it's like always going to be a thing. It's like yeah, we it's, always yeah, do it's this. It's delicious too. It's incredible. And I've, also, I've poured that before. It's really it's good value. It's yeah. like not expensive. They're no. always around these sort of 40, 50 oh, bucks. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent, and yeah. accessible too. Like you can find it too. Any recommendations for Alagote? What do you, uh, Justin? Do you mean food or do you mean wines? I mean, look, firstly this one, but also the Aubert de Villain. Uh, oh, and, fantastic. Um, and the one that I had at lunch that so I was correct on, um, Pierre-Yves Colin Murray. Oh, yeah. He's is crazy. Pierre-Yves Colin Murray is... Um, Bruno uh, Colin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Son. Yeah, and he does amazing sort of single, single oh, he's side got stuff. he's got so many. He's got like the Batard Morachets. He's got, he's got everything from yeah. um, village level and Bourgogne level up to Batard Morachets up to the Grand Cru level. The white meant to be for the cocktail Kerr. Uh, yeah, 100%. What? So the cocktail... Um, Kerr was made in Burgundy with Alagote originally, um, and then they add creme de cassis to it. So that was from the mirror. The mirror yeah. Bouzeron wanted a cocktail made after, made in Burgundy. So he used Alagote because Bouzeron is where they can make. AOP so this wine. is like the the OG Kerr punch. cocktail. Yeah, this is the yeah OG punch, and that's where the Kerr Royale came from, which is champagne with yeah. creme de cassis. 
That's insane. Mm-hmm. I have literally never, ever heard of that. The fact that Yuko, thank you so much for chiming in with that. And Dan, thank you so much for enlightening. That is like next level I got you. Knowledge. I got you. That is next level I knowledge. got you. Um, anyway, we have hit our time for this evening. Um, guys, thank you so much for, for chiming in and being a wonderful audience. We've got a large audience actually for tonight. So thank you so much for, for sticking with us. Thank Dan, you very much. Thanks so much for taking the time and coming on up. My absolute pleasure. Wouldn't, and miss, wouldn't have missed it for the world. Drops of wisdom throughout this entire show. There's probably like, there's, there's amazing sound bites that we can absolutely carry from all of that. Um, we have had Stephen the Horse, I'm Stephen to Horse, uh, in, uh, in, in the show tonight. Sam, Laura, and of course, Noah, thank you so much for, for producing this evening. Uh, you've been a fantastic MC. Uh, and guys, check us on Wednesday. We actually have a, now I'm not gonna butcher Actually, I am going to butcher his name. I'm going to butcher his name because you should know he's coming on Wednesday because it's actually really quite exciting. Um, and I know I'm going to butcher this. I'm so incredibly sorry if I'm he's watching this. this. Ufe? Ufe from Popolve? Popol... Popolveg? Popolve? I've completely butchered it. But if you go right back to when we had Katie Spain on here, we're talking like episode like 10. Yeah. Right? We tried some of the most amazing new ones from a brand new producer. I've heard of, his, heard of his ones. I've tried a bit of it. They are ridiculous. Mind blowingly good. Uh, he's giving up his, his Wednesday evening to come and join us as well. And we can actually learn uh, what the next generation of new winemakers are going to be doing in, in South Australia. But for now, we're going to hand you over to stay tuned as well. Um, jump onto the Applewood page. Um, we have Henry, of course, the Applewood brand ambassador, having some fun. Better with bubbles. Looking at cocktails with bubbles. Anyway, guys. Corral. Yeah, Corral. Let's <laughs> hope so. 